Lola and Fionn, congratulations on dating Amber. I loved it. I felt all of the emotions watching it. Um, Thank you. How are you guys feeling about the, ch uh, the fact that we're not going to be able to enjoy this in a cinema? Well, I think, I think we actually, um, we always said that like we saw the film, the perfect home for, for a film like Dating Amber, we always saw was on a streamer. So when we heard that um, Amazon had bought it and made it a prime original, like we were over the moon, we were jumping around the place. Um, you know, it's, it, I guess the, the traditional route is usually like a festival and then, um, and, and you get to, I mean, the, the, the thing is with a festival, you get to meet people after and do everything yeah. like this. But, um, but I mean, in terms of reach, this is more than we ever could have imagined that so many people are going to get to see it. And yeah, we're delighted. Yeah. And especially during this time as well, where we're all hunting out um, different stories. And I can't believe I was listening to David Frayne and he was saying that trying to get funding for this was a bit of a nightmare because people, the lines that were thrown at him, including, this is too funny for a gay film. Yeah. What? Like, what yeah. does that even mean? <laughs> I think oftentimes um, LGBTQ plus film, um, queer, film uh, queer film can be ghettoized into its own genre and people see it as unrelatable, which I mean, I think our film shows is incredibly untrue. Mm. There are a lot of themes um, in this film that are universal, um, but more than anything, people do want to hear queer stories and they seek them out. Um, it is quite mad that somebody would say that it's too funny for a queer film. Um, and I think that that stems from sometimes in queer film, things can be framed slightly tragically and that's important but it's also important to show queer people that um, their lives are full of hope and humor and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that that was something that was really important for us to remember yeah. throughout the entire project. Yeah. Well, it sort of reminds me, I don't know if you've watched um, Schitt's Creek while you've been in, in isolation, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love what Dan Levy has done with Schitt's Creek. There is a love story between two guys. That's just a love story between two guys. Okay. And, I'm, I, this is what I think I loved about Dating Amber as well. It was a coming, coming of age tale where the teens happened to be dealing with their sexuality as every single teenager does. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in the same respect, like everybody's dealing with their own sexuality in whatever way that, that is. It just, too happens that, it just so happens that these two people are queer. And I think the universal theme is, you know, finding a friend, that platonic yeah. love story. Yeah. We all have it growing up, that one friend that you fall head over heels for and who shapes you into the person that you are and that you're going to become yeah. and gives you the safe space necessary to grow into that. A lot of people say, you know, when they look back on um, their high school years, they look back with rose tinted glasses. And especially I think the Americans are here. It's like high school was the best years of my life. And I'd go back. There. <laughs> I know for me, I, high school wasn't a bad experience, but it's not somewhere I'd go back to in a hurry. What was high yeah. school like for you two? Well, it's funny. Cause like people, people go, like all the people who say, God, my high school years were the best years of my life. I'm like, what school do these people go to? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, my, my school years, I, I loved my, my school years. But as you said, you couldn't pay me to go back, even though I had a really lovely time. Um, and I really did have a lovely time. It'd be awful if you peaked then. Yeah. yeah. Right? What are the rest of the years for if that's where you peak? Yeah, because if you're like, oh, the best year of my life was when I was 14. Like, it's kind of like, oh, God. I mean, it's like, you have a long way to go. Yeah, it's like, that's not, it's not, that's not great. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed school. I, I really, I, I really did. Um, but, uh, and, and, and I, I, you know, um, had, great friends that I still have now and uh, and everything else. But, but yeah, you couldn't pay me to go no. back. What about you, Lola? What was school like for you? Um, school was grand. I mean, I couldn't wait to get out. Um, yeah. I think my head was always somewhere in the future. But I had amazing pals. I found a tribe of people very, very early on. Um, a small group of like-minded people. And they're still my best friends to this day. So, I mean, I was very, very lucky. But, I mean, I definitely wouldn't go back. <laughs> Not for all the money in the world. Yeah. But you did go back in this film and like making some great friends in school. You made great friends out of each other. And like usually when I, I've been doing a lot of these Zoom interviews and we've been Zooming into people's houses, but you two met each other on that set and then you decided to isolate together. How did all of that happen? Yeah, it was it was just like from the moment that we met, we just got on really, really well. And and um you know, Dave 
couldn't believe his luck because he, <laughs> he, he wanted to cast, um, you know, people who would pretend to be friends and, um, and we did the chemistry test and everything else. And that chemistry was there from the very beginning, but it just grew and grew and grew. And um, yeah, we just became best pals, which is a really, it's a really uh, special thing, I think. And you've been in isolation, so, you know, you've been watching a lot of TV like we do, including normal people. <laughs> what has it been like for you, Fionn, to watch yourself in the show? And Lola, for you to watch a show where a lot of your friends are starring, including your new best mate, Fionn? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 one thing that was so exciting about, about that was that um, there were plenty of things that were very exciting and I was a huge fan of the book and, and Lenny and Element and everyone um, but the chance to play a character that's so different from any uh, thing that I've done before was something that was really really exciting it's been mad watching it in quarantine because <laughs> um, you know you're you're seeing uh, all the reactions that you see are all online and on your phone or in like an aisle in Tesco or something <laughs> like that so like you, you only really get those like small interactions but no I, I mean I think all of us were so blown away by the reaction and we're we're made up that people uh, love it so much yeah I can get quite offensive it, it takes a lot for me to not tweet back at people online <laughs> when they say mean things and I'm like but he's a dote <laughs> he's the biggest dote I love him yeah because I was gonna say um I love that dating Amber has come out on the heels of normal people I know that that wasn't supposed to happen but it's almost like okay He's not, because Jamie isn't well-liked. So it's like, look, there's so many ranges. No. Fionn is actually acting. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, yeah, not well-liked is, is, is actually very kind of you to put it that way. I think, uh, I think that's the, the most yeah. hated man in Ireland yeah, at the minute, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, people, people really hate Jamie. And it's funny because when you make something, of course, Jamie's an antagonist. So you know people aren't going to fall in love with him. And he's a threat to... Uh, Connell and Marianne's relationship and you're vying for them to be together mm -hmm. so um we knew he wasn't going to be liked I don't think any of us were expecting the <laughs> vitriol that uh, there is online but we've had such fun like scrolling yeah. through and and seeing all those things but I'm looking forward to people seeing me in maybe a slightly uh, more positive light <laughs> but do, do shows like normal people dating um Amber along came a bump does that give you hope now in the industry like the Irish um Filmmaking industry has always been strong, but I feel now so many different stories are being told. And yes, it's great to go to Hollywood and be involved in that film industry, but does it make you want to stick around and be able to tell different stories and get not just Irish audiences, but global audiences to connect yeah. and see that there's so many other stories? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I think that like, like when you look at all the things that are coming out of Ireland at the moment, it just makes you so proud yeah. to be Irish. And um you know, I was like, I was so, so delighted that I was able to, you know, spend all of last year. It was funny because I just moved to London and then I came back to shoot Normal People and Dating Amber. So like, it was like, as soon as I moved away, I was straight back in Ireland oh, yeah. uh, working. But it makes you so, so proud to be Irish. And there's so many amazing things. Um, the industry is booming and, and more than anything, it's, it's, it, it gives you a lot to look forward to. Um, yeah. You know, you just think, you know, if this is how it is now, you know, you can only, you know, imagine what's going to be like in the future. Mm. Well, talking about the future, gosh, you guys have got so many projects on the go. Um, Lola, you've got three about to come out. Fionn, yeah. the Russo siblings, Tom Holland, Jack Rayner, Cherry. Who wants to take yeah. it first? Because you guys have got so <laughs> much going on. Yeah, God, L Lola has so many things going on. She yes. could go two hours talking <laughs> about all the things she's coming out. But, um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, Cherry will be out sometime next year, and um, uh, and um, yeah, it's the Russo brothers and and Tom Holland, and it's a um, it's a it's a coming of age story, but it's um, a kind of kinetic and wild coming of age story of a um, disenfranchised teen who um, who goes and serves in Iraq and um, gets PTSD and then forms an opioid addiction and starts robbing banks to fuel the opioid uh, addiction. Um, Jack and I unfortunately didn't actually cross paths on the filming because our characters uh, exist in two different places. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was a dream come true and I was pinching myself every day working with, with all of those people. And Lola, you're living the dream as well. Yeah, I've been, I've been very, very lucky. Um, I have some incredible projects coming out. Um, Bloodlands will be out sometime this year. 
which is a BBC One drama um, with James Nesbitt um, and lovely Charlene McKenna and Lisa Dwan. And then I have Here Are the Young Men coming out at some time next year, which was directed by Owen Mackin and stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Dean Charles Chapman and Finn Cole. And then I have Shadows, which is um, an Italian co-production and it's sort of this high concept thriller um, set post-apocalypse um, with the last sort of survivors in the world. It's so good to see you guys doing so well. But in the meantime, before all of that comes out, the beautiful <laughs> Dating Amber is available on Amazon Prime. Thank you for Dating Amber and thank you for taking the time to chat. I really enjoyed it. No, thank, oh, thank you, you so, so much. much. I really enjoyed it. <laughs>